Hello and welcome to The Daily Climate Show. Coming up, shortages of British vegetables could be coming this year as farmers struggle with energy costs, warns the head of the National Farming Union. Emissions of planet-warming methane remain stubbornly high. The IEA says they could be slashed easily if oil and gas giants used a fraction of their bumper profits. A new analysis shows higher gas prices have cost the UK as much as the furlough scheme in the years since Russia invaded Ukraine. Now, the president of the National Farmers Union in England and Wales is warning there could be shortages of vegetables this year as farmers struggle with the cost of energy. Now, Farming Minister Mark Spencer and Labour leader Keir Starmer have also been speaking at the conference in Birmingham. Uh, climate reporter Victoria Seabrook is also there. She joins me live now. Victoria, tell us what you've been hearing there. So the prevailing theme here today in Birmingham really has been about food security. And what that means, they're saying, is our ability to produce our food domestically. But this strong warning from the NFU president, Minette Batters, this morning, I spoke to her before the conference started. And she warned that because of high energy costs, which are set to go up again in April for farmers, actually uh, the cost of production for some, some vegetables grown inside, things like tomatoes and cucumbers, often grown inside, they need heat. That's becoming too expensive. That means that some of these buildings are already being mothballed. And she said that while the last, thing that any, the last thing any of us wants is rationing, there is a risk of that. This is what she told me. I think there are going to be challenges on availability of, of some food items, you know, tomatoes, peppers being a case in point, salad ingredients in, in general. Um, field veg, again, that's going to be challenging this year, potatoes. But I'm hoping that we can resolve these issues with the supply chain, with government, so that we can give farmers this level of confidence uh, and they will keep production levels up. Now, of course, this has come from the NFU, a very powerful industry group. And of course, lobby groups, they do tend sometimes to put out these very alarming warnings as a way of um, getting government to listen to what they want. What they want is help with their energy costs. So whether we will see rationing to the extent that she's sort of hinted at, let's see. But shortly after she spoke, we, had, we heard from Asda uh, announced that actually they were going to be limiting the sale of some items. That's for a different reason. That's because of drought in southern Europe and, and North Africa. But uh, it, obviously, it obviously doesn't help. And I put her concerns to the farming minister, Mark Spencer, who was here as well. And he refused to rule out rationing. Uh, he said he doesn't expect to see it, but he refused to rule it out. He also sort of sidestepped my question about whether he would, whether the government would extend their uh, energy support, uh, a new scheme coming in in April to farmers, most of them currently excluded from that. And then finally today, we did hear from Keir Starmer as well. And he was, uh, he, he said multiple times he talked about food security being national security. So that really is the, the, the key theme here today. And I think that's a reflection of really what's happened in the last year is that we are now talking about security of all these different areas when it comes to uh, farming, energy, food, climate goals and so on all in one go, really understanding how they link. Victoria Seabrook, thanks very much indeed. OK, well, let's take a look at some of the day's other climate news for you now. And the outgoing head of the Environment Agency has said everybody has to play their part when it comes to improving water quality. And during his final speech on water, Sir James Bevan highlighted improvements in beach and bathing standards, but acknowledged water quality has flatlined, urging farmers and water companies to clean up their act. 
A peat restoration project in the Cambridgeshire Fens is trialling growing reeds that can be used to insulate homes. Well, Peatland Progress has been awarded £8 million to restore 120 hectares of wetland. That's an essential natural tool for capturing and trapping carbon. The five-year trial will grow bulrush reed for insulation. And in Austria, a dozen children are taking their government to court to try and force them to set tougher targets to tackle climate change. A lawyer representing the children says the current climate law from 2011 doesn't sufficiently protect her clients from harm. Right now, the International Energy Agency has accused fossil fuel industries of doing too little to curb methane emissions and undermining global climate goals to limit warming. Now, despite economic uncertainty, high energy prices and concerns over the security of supply, the IEA's global methane tracker shows emissions remained stubbornly high, as they put it. Now, earlier I spoke to the IEA's head of energy supply unit, Christoph McGlade. I started by asking him why we should be concerned about methane. Tackling methane is among the most important things that can be done to limit near-term global warming. Methane is a much more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. And in fact, we estimate that around about 30% of the global warming that's been experienced today is caused by methane. And the analysis that we released today suggested that unfortunately, methane emissions from the energy sector rose last year. If we want to achieve our climate targets, we need to bring those emissions down very, very substantially. Right, so in order to do that, what does the industry really need to do and get to grips with? And, and presumably that would be really costly and take a long time? This should not be a very costly thing to do. We saw last year, for example, natural gas prices were incredibly high. And that should have given a real economic incentive to reduce methane emissions. Methane is basically the same as natural gas. And if natural gas prices are high, that means that that methane has a real economic value. And so we estimate that around about half of the methane emissions coming from the energy sector today could be reduced at no net cost. And in addition to that, we saw last year that a number of oil and gas companies around the world made huge profits, huge windfall income as a result of the global energy crisis. Around about $4 trillion they made last year. And just 3% of that windfall income would be enough to bring about a huge reduction in methane emissions. So it should be possible to save money while also helping to save the planet. Oh, so it sounds like a, a real win-win, really, doesn't it? But as I understand it, um, these pledges of, by the fossil fuel industry, and to be clear, we're talking about methane leaks as a result of uh, the process and the infrastructure, they've made these pledges to uncover and fix their leaking infrastructure from the fossil fuel industry, um, and yet they haven't done it. What, what do you think needs to be done now to make sure it is done? We have seen absolutely a huge number of new policies coming through and announcements by the oil and gas industry. But what we really need to see is action on the ground. Spending some of the, that um, huge amount of income that they made last year, investing that into methane abatement. Just to give one example here, we know that there are um, very large leaks that occur. They are now being detected by satellites. There's an ever-increasing amount of transparency. But normal oil and gas operations would also release an awful lot of emissions. And we have existing technologies to do this. A number of companies, a number of countries are producing oil and gas in a way that doesn't result in a large amount of methane. So we need those measures, those practices carried out by those best performing companies to be adopted much more widely. And also policymakers need to step up. They need to step up their efforts. They need to become more ambitious in terms of the methane reductions from um, occurring within their own countries. 
Now, Britain has spent £1,000 for every adult since the Russian invasion of Ukraine a year ago. That's according to new analysis from the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit, which shows the cost of higher gas prices has been equivalent to the £70 billion spent on the pandemic furlough scheme. Well, Britain has been one of the worst impacted in Europe, given our reliance on gas for heating and generating electricity on the grid. Well, I'm joined by Dr Simon cran McGrean, Head of Analysis at the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit. Good to have you with us here on The Daily Climate Show. Um, these figures are eye-watering and the impact is so widespread. Absolutely, that, that's correct. So we want to look back over this year uh, of the gas crisis since the invasion to understand the cost of buying gas on wholesale markets. And we estimate that it's around £70 billion, and that is around the price that the government paid for the furlough scheme in the pandemic. And it's around £50 to £60 billion more than we'd spend in a normal year buying gas. And of course, this wholesale gas is the core of the problem, but it's not the full extent of the problem. It's been driving increases in gas bills even higher. It's been driving electricity prices up, and it's been driving wider inflation across the economy, such as in the food sector, which we heard about in your first item. Right, so would we say the answer then is to turn to alternatives? And it, are, are we talking about alternatives? Or let, let's take, for example, wind and solar. Where, where are we at with that? So certainly, uh, if we want to reduce our gas consumption for electricity, then renewables are the obvious choice. And we're very fortunate that we do have rather a large amount of renewables already in the UK. We're well in our way. Uh, we generate each year about the same amount from renewables as we do from gas. So if it wasn't for the renewables we already have, we would potentially have been using twice as much gas for power generation as we have in the past 12 months. And that would have added an extra £20 billion to our costs. And we are making good progress towards uh, re more renewable deployment. And the more we have, the more we would save uh, on gas. OK, we're going to leave it there. Dr Simon Cran-McGrin, thanks very much indeed. Thank you very much. Now, just a reminder that you can watch Tom Heap to send into London's new super sewer this week. That's on Saturday and Sunday at 3.30pm, right here on Sky News. And before you go, we want your climate questions. Anything that's ever mystified you about the environment or whatever you want to get to the bottom of, just scan the QR code on your screen right now and send us your questions. We'll try and have them answered in the climate show with Tom Heap. And if you scan this QR code on your screen right now, you can listen to this week's edition of The Climate Cast. You can listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. And thanks for watching. That's all from us today. Join us again on The Daily Climate Show, same time tomorrow at 3.30pm. Bye-bye. <laughs>